Hi everyone, this is the second edition of the SIDB podcast. Uh, last week we had uh, the Italian roller derby on and this week we have a very glad to be able to have um, a lot of representatives from Czech roller derby. Uh, so I let them all introduce themselves and we're going to talk about the sport in Czech, in Czech Republic. Oh, hi there, uh, my name is Maika or Bambi Deerdeville uh, and uh, I'm a, a skater in Team Royal Derby Brno and with, uh, with me I have my uh, wife with this uh, Petya, pretty careless, and my derby wife, <laughs> cheap and easy, <laughs> Lenka. <laughs> and uh, so our team, it was uh, basically started uh, in 2016, so we're pretty new team, uh, but it took us quite uh, quite some time to actually get going. Basically, mainly due to the numbers of uh, or lacking numbers of our skaters. But uh, this year we were finally ready to go, and we finally mm -hmm. have uh, two bouts, uh, and uh, we are ready to derby after Corona again. <laughs> Yay! Cheers to the dog! <laughs> so, hi, I'm Luca. Uh, my derby name is Marke, and it's from the movement character in, fin in Finnish, so you can Google it later. Uh, I am a skater in Prague City Roll Derby. I've been there for six years, I think, now. And yeah, like Roll Derby basically ate my whole life. <laughs> and uh, for the last World Cup, I was chosen as one of the skaters to represent Czech Republic as part of the Czech Roller Derby team. So I'm going to be talking about that a bit. And yeah, so that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Joe, a uh, derby named Gorilla J. I started derby in my hometown in Porto, Portugal in 2012. And I've been a uh, skater with and coach uh, and many other things with the Park City Roller Derby, uh, which is the first uh, Czech team to be found in um, in the Czech Republic uh, around 2012 as well. So yeah, I've been I'm a bit of a veteran in this, but yeah, uh, it's it's great to to be part of this team. And yeah, also looking forward for um, for all of this to be over so we can all go back to skating. Um, and yeah, looking forward to that. Hi, uh, I'm Clara, a Scorch Bunny. Uh, I'm something like chairman of Heartbreaking Dolls. Um, this is the team which is second uh, in second Prague World Derby team. Uh, we were established at 2014, and that's all. <laughs> Hi, I'm Boyana, Derby name Lee Cornes. Uh, I used to skate with Prague City Roller Derby and then made the strategic mistake of moving to Ostrava where there is no <laughs> roller derby. <laughs> but it's, it's a work in progress. We were getting there before the whole pandemic locked down, so I guess we'll just have to start from scratch when all this blows over. Uh, and I can proudly say that I have skated or trained with all of the leagues in the Czech Republic and even some Polish leagues, given that I don't have a league of my own. Oh, it's my time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Jan, or as most people know me, I'm Vlas. Uh, I have been part of Heartbreaking Dolls League and I thought actually I'm a veteran as well, but I've been doing this only for two years actually, but it seems like a lifetime now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be covering the officials part of the things now in the Czech Republic, since we only have three and half teams, I can say, in the Czech Republic. But all these official events are still officiated by the same crew because there are not so many of us, so I think... I can cover all the organizational and official part, I think. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's good to have all of you. Um, <laughs> so I guess um, the uh, World Derby in the Czech Republic is a bit like World Derby in Austria, for example, in that I think for a long time you basically had one place where there was World Derby. Um, and then, you know, because I think 
So can we t- talk a bit about how how Royal Derby sort of is in the Czech, in the Czech Republic now? Because for a long time there was this Prague City, right? And then yeah. So can I start? <laughs> 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 I yeah, think so Lisa is the most appropriate person yeah. to talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been in this for a while, and also, um, yeah. And I like to talk and hello, <laughs> listen to. <me>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brexit Derby has been the first and only league for a while in the Czech Republic, and um, it was like a big struggle to actually share all Derby outside of Prague for a while. I remember when I joined uh, PCRD, which was six years ago, PCRD had an exhibition in Brno, uh, where the Brno Freak <laughs> Show are from yeah. now. And uh, they were attempting to, you know, establish some base to, you know, start a role derby league in there. But I think, I'm not sure if it was you, Micah, who came to the exhibition. Yep. Yes. So Micah joined and it took her about another two years to year, actually year have a, a team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I so even like, more. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah talk. Basically, <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, as Luta said, like, uh, I was uh, at the first exhibition that was in Brno. And uh, there I actually fell in love with, with World Derby, but uh, even though we had few people who also attended the event, uh, it actually took some time to gather the right amount of people who were uh, willing to buy equipment and make this investment, uh, even though nobody was sure whether it's going to work out in Bernard. And it took approximately a year or two years to uh, get few skaters who were uh, persistent enough to uh, get into it and uh, start to skate. So yeah. yeah. So was it was it the, I mean was it the cost or was it roller derby is weird and new or was it everything? I mean what was what what, what was it that you needed to convince people about? Uh, at the beginning, for for us in Brno, the main reason people. Uh, wanted to join up but didn't in the end it was that uh, the price of the equipment is too high uh, mm-hmm. to make the initial investment mm-hmm. and since nobody was sure whether it's going to work out in Brno, nobody wanted to take that risk and it's prolonged everything but uh, since right now we have enough spare equipment we can borrow our uh, our newbies uh, it's much easier to gather more people and uh, get get them going there wasn't any chance chance for them to try it first it mm-hmm. was like either either buy it or nothing yeah. mm-hmm. and also we didn't have any space to train so we were just doing some stuff outside and there was like very little progress in the very beginning so it went very slow yeah yeah like i think there was also some attempt to make a roll derby team in pilsen yeah which is a Mm -hmm. town to the west from prague is it west yes Yes. and (laughs) (laughs) my geography is not very good Yeah, well, Brno is more to the eastern side of Czech Republic Mm -hmm. to give people some (laughs) ideas. So uh, there was some attempt to do this in Pilsen, but uh, yeah, there was the same issue. Like they didn't have people, they didn't have equipment and it stopped after like one summer, I think when the people who were actually interested just lost interest. And now they don't have a roller derby team, but they have like a roller dancing club class something like this and it's working quite well for them so we hope that maybe there is some future for mm-hmm. derby players but the at this moment we young uh that's uh the dancing group it's about like 15 year old girl. Oh, yeah yeah so they have to grow up yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's always junior junior derby. Juniors, <laughs> really. so you get into junior derby it'll be fine because I, mean, I don't think there is any junior derby in there is not. Uh, not there yet. is not. The, there's been some interest shown, but um, I, I can speak uh, for myself and, and I think for PCRD, it's not something that um, uh, I don't think as a league, it, it's not something that we're ready to embrace yet, uh, just because of um, the whole 
you know, logistics around it. You are dealing with minors. So there's a lot of uh, things to think about. Uh, so it's, I, personally, uh, I am a coach. I've been coaching for quite some time, uh, several teams. And um, it's not something that I personally would like to do just because if it's a lot of responsibility. Mm. Uh, you know, if you get a junior getting hurt or because it can happen, you know, and people will deal with injuries uh, in a quite a different way. And uh, there's a lot more emotions around it. So uh, it's just something that um, it's not that easy for now. But who knows in the future? Yeah. The same for us in Bernal, uh, yeah. even though we, we have received several, several messages, it's you, uh, every, uh, each year it's, it's several messages from parents who are sending us uh, like, I, I, I got them like three messages from from moms like yeah my my child is, is she's 11 years old and she really likes roller skating mm -hmm. can she do roller derby and then she, they they're actually sending us like pictures of their children on, on skates <laughs> like they really want to do derby and skates <laughs> but like, no. yeah. Yeah. actually we don't have like enough people to do all the logistics around it yeah like, yeah. we barely have enough people to, to, to like take care of the trainings for freshies in our own league so i think that for us it's like very distant future if ever that yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's the people it's the equipment and it's the venues that are mostly the issues i think if there was a juniors team it would be a little easier with the venues because usually we train at um, school gymnasiums. So they are like, yeah, we don't want you here. But if we had something for kids who are actually part of the school, maybe it would make it easier. Mm. But yeah, it's like a really big commitment, which we are not ready for just now. I don't think any league in Czech Republic at this moment, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's also a real problem, uh, the insurance policy, what was told like, yeah. before, like, mm -hmm. it's right in Czech Republic, uh, actually, it's just only one company, uh, which is provide you uh, the insurance, and uh, I don't know how it works for minors, so it's a real problem. Mm. Yeah, that's, mm. that's, that's actually quite a frequent problem, um, is um, the insurance. I know in the UK, there's you have to get different insurance if you're doing juniors, I think, because of that reason, because obviously contact mm. with, Contact with people who are minors is a diff very different insurance prospect. Yeah. But just a disclaimer, like insurance in Czech Republic and healthcare system is very good. So we are like, <laughs> fine. But like legally, it's yes. not that easy. If you want to say, I got injured at roller derby game, please give me money. Well, they mm -hmm. want. <laughs> yeah. you, you will get taken care of if some, something happens to you, whatever you do, but, uh, but if you want to ex actually receive some, some money from insurance company for getting hurt, it's, uh, it's a little bit harder. With yeah. So, I guess moving on from Junior Derby, I mean, we haven't let a uh, representative of the newest team speak. So, um, I mean, so Bruno, you've been, you've actually played two games, right, in Bruno now? Yep, yep. So, uh, it was uh, the first one, it was uh, again Austrian team in Innsbruck. Uh, Innsbruck? Innsbruck? Yeah, yes. it was Innsbruck. And uh, the latest uh, game uh, we actually played in Ostrava, in uh, Buenos home, hometown. Uh, uh, and it was against uh, Smoking Wheels Krakow. Uh, and it, it was really amazing game and uh, actually it was a weekend before before uh, like close down uh, close down of all, all the gyms and all, all the events mm -hmm. so we just we managed right in time, right in time <laughs> actually uh, to, to make it all happen uh, and uh, yeah but it was all uh, really thanks to Boyana who was amazing space um, she has, I think, Buena has the best opportunity to <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's not my personal venue. space, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but, but like, uh, one of the main reasons why, why we actually wanted to do it in Ostrava was also to promote it there. 
because uh, uh, we want Buena to have her team, <laughs> even though we love to have her in ours. Uh, yeah. But uh, we want to have her base team to, to play in Ostrava and to make it start there. So we wanted to make it as a promotion in Ostrava yeah. to let people know what it's for Adobe and actually to see it. Yeah. And that can be really useful. So, I mean, Liana, how, how did it go? I mean, how is, how is Ostrava? Uh, uh, Trehali, Ostrava going in terms of it's well right now nothing is going anywhere. But <laughs> yes, but <laughs> it's that's also true uh, of everywhere in the world, pretty much. But. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It was. I mean, the the timing was perfect because I I was also playing on the Brno team and I really wanted for this game to happen because it's all I've been striving for since I moved to Ostrava in 2018. Uh, so from that point of view, it was amazing and it did have a pretty good turnout at the game and many people that I wouldn't expect to see like families coming to watch the game so mm. it was pretty nice we m finally managed to stir up some interest and I think we were this close to having the critical mass required to kickstart the team some people even contacted me to tell me that they have already placed orders on their skates and oh, then the <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it was everything went so fast, and then within a week it was okay. So we're gonna go skate on Friday, and no, let's see how the situation evolves. And my skates have not arrived because the skate shop closed down because of the government restrictions. And let's keep in touch, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so so what actually, uh, this is the so saddest what? story ever. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's so just timeouts. <laughs> So what, what, what are the restrictions currently um, in the Czech Republic? Because I mean, in the UK, you could still go outside and skate, just not with other people. I don't know how strict the Czech Republic are being about their... It's pretty strict, uh, I would say, but uh, I, I guess that uh, the, these restrictions are helping contain the, um, the spread of the disease, which I think it's working pretty well here. Uh, if we compare it to the rest of Europe, so I think it's uh, one of the good examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and pretty much you people are advised to work from home. I guess mm -hmm. all of us are, well, at least I am uh, doing home office for three weeks already. Mm -hmm. um, you can still go outside to like uh, to do some shopping or if you have a doctor's appointment or you can even go for a walk if you want or to do sports but you have to wear a mask at all times outside of your home. And you can, if you're in public space, you can only be uh, in groups of two people. Okay. So, uh, and of course they're advising the social distancing of, mm -hmm. I don't know, one or two meters. And, uh, and yeah. Half. Sorry? <laughs> two and a half? Uh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, like, for example, my, uh, my, the office where my company is working from, it's still open, meaning that people can go work from there, but no one is going. So there's a lot of um, responsibility. Uh, people are having, a, are being a lot, very responsible about it. And uh, you can see a lot of um, um, community uh getting together and because there were no available masks uh, people are doing it at their homes and giving them out for free and to hospitals and stuff like that which is uh, quite quite interesting and, and really nice to see so how are you coping with uh, keeping up training are you actually or are you just doing stuff indoors or are you risking going outside on skates and claiming it's exercise I am <laughs> I, I'm mostly staying at home I only go out for a walk every week or so. I try to stay home mostly, but uh, in PCRD we are meeting two to three times a week online. So we're trying to have an off skates um, training, just some uh, you know physical exercise to to keep us together and moving and motivated somehow. Uh, then uh, once a week we do some. Uh, on skates for like really small spaces so that people can do it at home or in the street if they want to and on Sunday so after uh, our meeting we're, we're watching um, one or two games usually from you know European teams or from playoffs or something like that and just analyzing strategies and see how we can relate what we see to the things we have been training in PCRD so that when 
we um we hopefully when we can go back to training which uh so sooner rather than later i hope uh that we can you know uh look back into these strategies that we analyzed and to these movements and try to to replicate uh, some of it on, and to adapt to our to our team strategy and to to our playbook pretty much and um, Bruno I assume something similar are you um... uh, yeah at, the, at first we were trying to put together some kind of sorry our dog is trying it's okay to dogs are allowed on screen <laughs> <Sorry. fine. laughs> Yeah, so, so uh, at the beginning we were trying to do some, some kind of uh, uh, common exercise together online. However, it uh, didn't work out that well. Uh, so now since uh, the three of us, we, we live in the same apartment, we, we are actually trying to, trying to stay, uh, stay in shape and do some exercising. And I know that uh, some of our team, member, team members are also, uh, also exercising at home. Uh, and sometimes we, uh, we try to meet uh, and go skate outdoors for a bit. It's, uh, it's like the practice of uh, bridging all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, the, I think we, we, after all of this, we, we are all going to be pretty rusty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be pretty hot. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of uh, one of the reasons why a lot of tournaments, even later in the year, have been cancelled is because everyone is worried that everyone is going to be very rusty. You know, yeah. Because... yeah. Uh, for us, it's especially a bummer because of, we have like the recruitment of newbies just before this whole un unveiled. So basically, uh, we taught them just the very, very basics and they were getting better and now they are stuck at the same yeah. level and we can't really do anything yeah. for them at the moment. Yeah, after two, three trainings, uh, I just hope that they are trying to skate at home for a bit uh, with their yeah. skates, but, but that's, that's the only thing we can hope for. Or it might be they're going to be just so happy to be finally able to move after the lockdown is over that everybody's going to rush into the sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the Probably. same problem what we had oh, because we had for one month uh, the fresh meat, so so we just only uh, try to post them some videos about uh, off skate training mm -hmm. and uh, we also try to do something uh, similar for us that uh, we want to try to analyze our old uh, bouts mm -hmm. from videos but we had a problem that we had just only one video <laughs> so <laughs> actually ended with not, not so much good so and uh, in March, we had challenges, uh, squat challenges. This is something what we had in our team that we are trying to do some off skates training and we have uh, months challenges, uh, squats, launches, and something like that. So, and on March was squats, so that's it. And um, with Joanna for Ostrava, I mean, how, how I mean, we, we, we had a bad <laughs> story, but I mean, I, 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 I I'm kicking myself into shape as good as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, uh, how are you keeping the rec the recruits you have engaged? Are you, are they well, always given, able to communicate? Yeah, that we didn't mm -hmm. even started any skating because there was just so little mm -hmm. time and none of them actually got the skates. I'm just, um, po we, there is a skaters group. It's not the team. Facebook group, but it's a skaters group where I'm posting stuff from time to time, but I suppose that people have other things on their minds, given that mm. they haven't fully committed themselves to the sports mm -hmm. before the lockdown, so so it's difficult to, to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. also, uh, just an add, like, yes, everything, like, we are, we can work from home, some of us, but many of the shops and uh, had to be closed down. Mm -hmm. uh, and also all the restaurants and pubs and markets and also our uh, borders are closed down right now. So many people are like in the situation where they are either losing jobs or losing their income or about to mm -hmm. lose their jobs. So it's like a very stressful situation. Mm -hmm. So. I understand that not everybody is like, yeah. you know, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. yeah, committed to mm. a sport at this moment when they can't mm. even do it because there is much more bigger crisis about the, about to come. And mm. I mean, I think 
us on this chat, we are just too crazy about roll derby that no matter what happens, we will just be there and be, you know, ready. <laughs> but I understand that people who have like different things on their minds or who have families, yeah. like they have oh, yeah, yeah. problems yeah. at this moment. Yeah, of course. But I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's, it, there's a balance, right? Because the people who can work from home probably have slightly more time than they normally would because they don't, they're not commuting and stuff. And then there's the people who can't work who have the opposite yeah. problem. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's understandable. But to move off the depressing topic, uh, <laughs> uh, um, but also, yeah, so I mean, yeah, we can talk about it, but let's talk about Derby. Um, so, I mean, the Czech Republic's also interesting because you're surrounded by other nations that also have uh, Derby. And indeed, I mean, Germany is really not that far away, even from, even from Prague, really, in terms mm -hmm. of distance. So how how engaged have you, I mean, would you say there's been a lot of engagement and involvement with the nations around you? To, I mean, you said I mean, Bruno played Innsbruck, right? So does Czech Derby tend to be sort of Central European Derby in the sense that you play all the people around you? Uh, more or less, yeah. Uh, at, at least in PCRD, we have played French teams. Uh, we've played... Um, Finnish uh, teams. Yeah, Finnish teams. We, we played uh, a lot of countries that are not exactly Central Europe, mm. but we were actually going... Um, a week after the lockdown, we were going to Germany for a tournament, uh, which we had to cancel, obviously. So, yeah, but I think we try to, to play with the countries around us just because it's also easier for traveling. So, yeah. I, I think there is quite a disparity of levels simply based on how long each of the leagues has existed. And mm -hmm. the track teams tend to be more oriented towards the more advanced countries like playing German or French or Finnish teams, uh, whereas the... Moravian Silesian region, the southeastern, mm -hmm. Ostrava including for now, are more oriented towards the east because roller derby yeah. scene is rising in Poland as well mm -hmm. and all of the smaller Baltic countries. So I think for now, kind of the there is a clear geographical separation between the levels and the teams that we each play on the east and the west side of the mm -hmm. country. Yeah, oh, yeah, so there's a little issue with Germany because they have Bundesliga. So, like many of the leagues are committed to, you know, fulfill the games in the Bundesliga. So, like, sometimes, especially for PCRD, we would love to play more German teams, but they don't have time for it because they have other commitments, which is totally understandable. So, that's also why, especially in PCRD, we are focusing not just on Germany, but also, you know, like, Italian teams or Spanish teams. Um, yeah, I think we played with like lots, so many nations, so it doesn't yeah. really matter if it's Central European or not. The only issue we have is if uh, the teams are traveling here or we are traveling there, if we can afford it at that mm -hmm. moment. And if the levels are at least a little bit balanced, so the game is interesting. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I also wanted to say that it's very uh, interesting in parts of the in terms of the organization of officials, because there is lots of people from Berlin, Augsburg, Dresden, Linz, which you can meet all over the derby events. And you are, oh, I saw you two months ago. There, there, how are you doing? What are you planning for the season? Oh, let me know. We can just, you know, take the car and it's three hours to Prague and we can come with all the officials. So, I mean, it's very, very nice. You can make all of these contacts in German and Austrian cities and you just know the people more and you it's a very um, very friendly basis and you see the same faces like each two three months on different events and it's very very friendly and very nice for our organization you just message them hey we have this thing in prague come over and they, oh yeah definitely so this mm. is also very 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 nice yeah, I would like to really give a big shout out to our officials because we have like a group of skating officials who are right now traveling or like not right now, but you know, like when Derby is actually active, <laughs> they are like traveling everywhere. Like, uh, okay, I will say if my boyfriend is going to <laughs> the lot to skate uh, and officiate uh, as a ref. So like 
um, there are months where I don't see him at home on the weekends because he's in Stockholm and then he's in Germany and <laughs> yeah so like I think Czech officials, like especially skating officials, we are not as active as non-skating officials. So that's an issue we could maybe tackle later. Uh, but yeah, our skating officials are trying to really like get the experience and uh, be very professional and yeah. And also make friends because that's like the best part of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for hard breaking girls, uh, what I can, uh, what I want to say that uh, we were proud that last year uh, we were able to uh, hosting tournament and there was uh, really uh, good um, like teams from uh, Germany, uh, Austria, Poland, and for example Riga, uh, which I really want to say about Riga is that uh, the tournament is uh, for Riga the opportunity to play because they have just only eight players. So mm. I always uh, met them on some tournaments also uh, like in uh, oh, Biore, I think it was. Uh, it was Slavic tournament, so, and they also play there. So it's amazing opportunity for these small teams, which are, for example, not uh, the members of the Bundesliga or not to play them. So they can join and uh, be this, uh, in this tournament. And so we planned also this year have the tournament, but uh, during the uh, circumstances, it was postponed. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, sevens have also been a big thing for that kind of thing. In other, because I know didn't Prague participate in one of the Polish uh, sevens yeah. tournaments? At least several of them, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also. So the, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, the leagues participated in some Polish yeah. tournaments. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're very, they're very welcoming. Um, the Polish W community at the moment. Yeah, and they have actually a really huge advantage because uh, the tournament was for free for audience, which is uh, because they have sponsors. So mm -hmm. there is so easy for them to organize these kind of thing. But in Czech Republic, I can say that we have a problem because I think in Czechs, uh, like for Czech people, the Royal Derby, uh, the, it's still a uh, sport, uh, girls about booties and that mm. like, uh, it's mm. not like the awareness about uh, like dynamic sport or like official sports. Yeah. So it's a problem for us and we don't have that much sponsor of what we want. Like, yeah. you know, I, for us, uh, uh, the, the venue is also the issue to, to be able to host uh, some event mm -hmm. uh, in our city, which we would love to do. Uh, it's it's a problem because uh, not many venues, not many gyms would let us in, uh, and there's not that not that many of them that they are big enough to, mm. to be able to host uh, old audience. So that's mm -hmm. also one of the reasons uh, why uh, we tend to uh, try to travel somewhere else. But this also means that we cannot promote uh, the sport in our own city. Yeah, no, it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, and again, that's. A surprisingly common problem. I mean, not just in the Czech Republic, but venues across Europe seem to, and indeed the world, seem to be somehow terrified of people on wheels hitting each other. In, <laughs> yes, I would think that Ostrava is one of the rare exceptions in the world where it's the only <laughs> exception in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Only there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't need a team if you would all just come and bout in here. <laughs> or just move there, right, Bojana? <laughs> or, or, yeah, that, that would be ideal. <laughs> Let's go to where no, the venue is. <laughs> After the last game, it was Brno Krakow in Ostrava. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was really, really great venue. Can, can we have more games there, please? <laughs> yes. You can have as many games as you want to outside of, of exhibition periods like the late spring summer period. The, the venue is open for free for anybody that would like to use it wow. as long as it's not rented to someone for money. And yeah. if we want to organize some kind of um, events that is not paying or private, so we're not paying for rental fees and we just open it to the general public. So it's like ideal space for promotion of of any kind of sports for that matter. Yeah. My heart. <laughs> we love this place. Do you need to sign up for it anyhow? Like you need to be the event here. I so. I'm just right to sending an email to the manager of the venue. Yeah. Cool. It's very, oh, it's boy, very yeah. 
like personal arrangement. It's very unofficial, but we still have a full support of an official structure of the city that is a huge and well-known institution. So that's amazing. Yeah, we're also, well, when I say we, uh, it's like everybody that helped organize the last yeah. bout are also taken seriously because it's not like uh, a random group of girls in and their booties playing a game, but it's an event supported by an official structure of the city, which let's be yeah. honest, in the Czech Republic, it kind of helps. It does. <laughs> oh yeah, please, please. When this all blows over, just please let's make some more games in Ostrava because I think we can get some nice Polish teams in there because for them it's not far. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. For us, it's like three hours on a train, which is nothing. I mean, it's four hours by train from Varso, so... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are basically all moving, moving to Ostrava, oh, yeah, I think. <laughs> The, the central of all Central Europe, Central European Royal Derby will now be Austria from now on. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a shame there is no team yet. So, like, yeah. well, we'll you know. get there. And again, yeah, genuinely, if you keep hosting stuff, you will get there because you get people by showing people that's, stuff. That's my yeah. plan. I'm going to stop chasing people and just do roller derby the way I want it with other teams. And then eventually, people will come along. So, if you build it, they'll come. So, I guess the question. I want to ask is, uh, we should think about people's perception of roller derby. So is there also something of a language barrier? Um, Jan will know that I'm leading into something that he can talk about if he wants to. But uh, because, so for example, the rules, the rules and a lot of derby material are mostly in English. Um, and when they're not in English, I think in, in, um, in, they're often in German and French in, um, in Europe because the German and French communities are very large. So is there a problem getting people to know about Derby because stuff isn't in Czech? Um, and not just the rules, but other stuff. People don't write about Derby in Czech, for example. Yeah, um. it's a little issue. I mean, it really depends because we have like, even people who don't understand or speak English yet, because usually when you join a role Derby League, you start to, you know, understand more English mm -hmm. like especially in Praxis Roll Derby we have many foreigners so all our practices are being bilingual and all the materials and all the in communication has to be bilingual in Czech and English so many people are getting more used to using the language but also since like uh, yeah we have people who are like really committed uh, we try to translate at least like the materials that are very necessary there wasn't the rules yet, but Jan will talk mm -hmm. about it later, so <laughs> I will not get into that. But um, I think the issue is that there isn't much coverage. And if there is coverage, it's usually very like limiting. Like if there is some media writing about, you know, they visited our game, they usually mention that they saw girls in short shorts. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, you know, there's yeah. so much more than this. And mm. yeah, like it's not just the girls or the women, like it's so much more, but it's really hard to pass this um, idea to other people. Also, I think, well, that's my theory, maybe girls or people will, you know, confirm. I think Czech Republic is not that very like openly feminist country, like there's lots of like internalized, you know, sexism and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you see girls doing sport, it's like, oh, it's so cute that girls are doing sport, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. not being that, <laughs> taken that seriously. So I think also this might be an issue. I don't know. That's my is, theory. Is it different somewhere else? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not in my experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, so, yeah. I think it's like general... people. Sorry. No, I think that's a general thing. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's a general thing, but I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I think it's it's really in some places hard to others. say. It's like it, not, not to say that it, it, it isn't a problem because it is, but I, I was just like thinking about whether whether other teams have this easier yeah. or, or. I would. Yeah. What I feel is that people always, when whenever someone asks me, how is my roller derby going they don't say how's your sport they say how's your hobby and um you know it's yeah i do it as a hobby it's not my main occupation for sure or i do it in well we all do it uh in an amateur um way because it's an amateur sport mostly 
but uh, I think we all do it very professionally at the same time and take it very seriously, or at least I do. So sometimes I, I just, I once asked a friend of mine, like if he would ask me about my hobby, if I would do basketball or football, soccer. So said, no, yeah, I see your point. You're right. So, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a sport for sure. And it's very demanding. And I've done a lot of different sports. And I think this one is one of the most demanding that I've ever done. So uh, it, it just hurts me a bit that people call it a hobby. Yeah, you can do it as a hobby, but it's, you know, very demanding. It's not like you know, I don't know, playing mini golf on Sundays, you know, I don't want to, to make it uh, to say that mini golf is bad. I really like doing it, but it's not, you know, physical, very demanding for me at least. So, you know, <laughs> no, the mini golf community is coming for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, yeah. It's, I think it's I helping know. to play good games because for example, uh, when we spoke uh, with different team, for example, from Poland, uh, they were very interesting in quad games. And uh, with the guys, when uh, like the audience see men in uh, on tracks, like, hey, it's not just only girls, and hey, it's good to be uh, played by men. Like, yeah, oh, they they really want to. yeah, actually, it's it's bad. But uh, like for example, for our team, it's uh, we really want to. Uh, when we have recruitment, also uh, ask men that if they want to join the team, because for us, it's very really important. And we really want to uh, found men's team in Czech Republic, and it will be pretty amazing. And mm. also for uh, promotion of women, <laughs> like, uh, and it will help, according to me and my team. Yeah, but that's just kind of sad. That yeah, you it is. get but, guys yeah, in, a, in a mostly w- female sport to be taken seriously it's just but uh, for yeah. us it's just not only female sport but it's mostly played by women yeah, but, yeah. uh it's sport it is the important. yeah of course so it's sport yeah yeah but i mean i agree i mean there's a, there's a question about pragmatism versus um ideological purity like if it, it would be, yeah. it would be even better if we could get people to take world derby seriously without needing to have yeah exactly yeah, so I, yeah, I, I mean, I agree, but it's, I don't know, it's, a, it is a hard problem. It's a problem everywhere as well. Um, so, I remember when we did the World W World Cup uh, 2018, uh, the first image the BBC used to promote the thing was a was a was a image from the men's World W World Cup. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I remember that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and to be fair, it, it it wasn't even the BBC because we were actually on very. We talked to the BBC a lot, and they, the people we were talking to, knew exactly what was going on. And there was some some random staffer who'd been told get a get a roll derby picture, and they just picked the first one that looked like a roll derby picture, right? and it was fixed as soon as we pointed it out. But you know, it says something about implicit assumptions about sport. Yeah. Uh, so yes. you know. <laughs> but for example if you uh i don't know if you know about uh rugby in czech republic mm. uh rugby uh started we have a really popular uh women rugby in czech mm. and uh it started on men's teams and uh like i don't know it's about five years ago uh when uh the audience actually started to accepting that women playing uh the rugby and now it's more popular than the men rugby oh. And it's yeah, really amazing. So uh, you have to work uh, with the people that you have. And here in mm. the Central Europe, uh, I don't think we are so like open-minded, if I can say. And uh, so we can just only push them our ideas, but we have to uh, learn them how to accept us. So I think that's the way what we can work with. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's a concept uh, in political philosophy called an Overton window, which is the said to the range of the range of opinions that are considered to be reasonable by the average person. And the idea is that the way you win is by shifting the Overton window in the direction you want it to be in. So that things that currently people think are weird are currently become further inside the window and then they're accepted. Mm-hmm. I think obviously for example Czech rugby has managed to do that. They've shifted this and, and by existing they that might that might well help for example, roller derby, because the, the range of ideas now in, in the Czech Republic includes women playing sport and being popular. 
at least in one sport. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, to answer your question, I don't think <laughs> there's a real problem with the language barrier because... <laughs> Sorry, Wallace. That was a beautiful, a beautiful segue. <laughs> that was really beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I think we, we strayed off topic a little bit. We did. <laughs> a little bit. No, as, uh, as both Joe and Lusa said, uh, PCRDR much more bilingual than Heartbreaking Dolls at the time now because Heartbreaking Dolls, I'm speaking as part of Heartbreaking Dolls right now, because we had uh, two or three uh native speakers they are not very active right now so actually on track uh during practices and during events there is actually no need for us to speak english at all okay. uh, we uh, but still we use the official terms like mm -hmm. cut and everything we say these official terms in english anyway so uh our newbies are not uh, learning language they are learning the terms yeah, so i don't think there's a huge language barrier there, there is. There is a huge language where if you want to do uh, official, because mm -hmm. most official teams are English-speaking teams. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you want to do uh, officiating, yeah, you need to be fluent in English, definitely. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, as a skater, as a part of the league, not really. It's mm -hmm. not very hugely important. And if there is some like misunderstanding, there is... Uh, many people around you who can just clear things up and help you translate and help you express yourself correctly. So mm -hmm. as for day-to-day -day league team working, there is no real language barrier, from my point of view, at least. Yeah. From an officiating perspective, so again, pushing along with this. So I, I know there's been some work done on producing a translation of the rules into Czech. Uh, so... Can we talk a bit about that? I mean, so does WFTJ know about this and how is things going with it? Uh, I don't know if anybody except our team knows about it. Like our okay. league. I know about, about it. Everybody knows about <laughs> yeah. it. Oh yeah, we talked about it over beer, of course. <laughs> but this, this thing started, I think, last year, maybe two years ago when uh, there were, we had some newbies, lots of fresh meat. And uh, I think, you know, I, I think everybody from here knows when they first saw their roller, the roller derby game, like you don't know what's happening. Like there are two teams, seven officials, like yeah. everybody's shouting, it's a huge hot mess. And <laughs> now we are trying to make some sense of it all. So, uh, when uh, newbies start practicing skating, you know they know how to skate and do skating, but they don't actually know what to do on the track. What's the game? Yeah. How how do we play the actual game? So uh, we started to translate the basic terms. Mm. We started translating the basic things, and we started meeting like every two weeks over a beer and make it like sizzle it to more and more perfection. Like it was. Originally, it was just our project to help our team to understand the game better because, you know, there are some very, very hairy situations when you are not thinking, is this legal? Is this like illegal? And it's, you need to open the rules and see the exact wording of something mm -hmm. like penalty. You need to see exact wording. And uh, in this, if you are not very, very good at English, you don't know anything. Yeah. So this is how this whole project started. And uh, we have, uh, right now we have translated all the rules. And surprisingly, the rules are not that long. It's just a few pages. The case yeah. book is what the problem is. <laughs> the <laughs> case book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you started the translation thing now. If you have the now, full not, rule yeah. set, yeah, if you have the full rule set, it's just one third, one quarter of the full pages are just the rules. The rest yeah. is case book. Yeah. So, if you'd done this in 2015, it would have been a different matter. Because oh, yeah. the reason the case <laughs> exists is to get all that stuff out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, so but, but, I mean, how, but, yeah. Did you, I mean, did you find it relatively easy? I mean, it's a technical no. translation. A technical translation is usually regarded as being one of the harder kinds of translation because technical languages 
often jargon that isn't commonly spoken. You've got to be very, very precise. So, I mean, how was the experience of doing the translation? It was horrible, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there, there are some terms in there which we don't have in our language. For mm. example, uh, over the last two weeks, we are trying to do some proofreading to make it at least uh, publishable. Mm -hmm. Because we would like to share it to other teams. I think uh, both Brno and Ostrava, like they could use it for recruitment. Mm. For sure. And for example, uh, for the last two weeks, I've been thinking real hard of the term lapping, to lap. Mm. We don't have this term in Czech. <laughs> so so yeah. this whole term, you need to take the whole concept, you need mm -hmm. to explain mm -hmm. it, and you need to somehow describe it. Because there is no way how to translate it in one word, one phrase. So uh, it was a huge hot mess, and now we are in a phase of proofreading, and we need to be consistent because uh last year i think we translated some terms in a different way than we would do it today so we need there is lots of going back to mm -hmm. what we have actually done we need to change yeah. terms and yeah. but it's fun it's fun yeah. <laughs> and what about what about things like terms that really don't have a translation like for example jammer i mean the Jammer as a term is basically well Derby specific. Um, mm -hmm. So, are you just leaving it in, or are you trying to find a thing, a word that has the same kind of sense in Czech? Um, I assume you're just leaving them untranslated if they're jargon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's like the very, very game specific term like a jammer, we just keep it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we do the Czech inflections. So, <laughs> you know, there is a lot of. Uh, endings and suffixes and prefixes which, which we can use to do the Chenglish thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we keep these terms and uh, whenever necessary we just put the official English term in the brackets just so it's visible that this is Derby official term you can mm -hmm. find in the Google Siri. So, but we tried to translate some of these things like, you know, like track. Track can be translated. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so, yeah. yeah. I'm very glad that someone has put uh, you could put the effort in because it's one of those big projects that people often think they need to do, and then the amount of effort required is uh, usually puts people off. So I'm glad that there is now a Czech language, even as a draft Czech language translation of the rules. It's, it is a good and important thing, I think, to have these kind of things. Yeah. I think also because the rules have changed, at least since I started, yeah. I think I saw like, I don't know, five, six rules changes. <laughs> so it's very, we did it in Portugal when, when I was starting Derby, we translated it and I cannot remember precisely, but uh, probably when we would finish it, we would have a new rule set. So it's very, yeah. it's a very, um, uh, and welcoming job to do because you you just have to keep doing it. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the the official translation teams for the WTA supported language translations, I think they get they are part of they get advance notice of what the changes are going to be, so they're kind of more folded in. But yes, mm -hmm. doing an, doing unofficial translations is is a as you say a thankless task because things keep yeah. changing. Um, so yeah. No, but I, even I, if I they do. change, uh, we would have like the glossary or um, some basic concepts that we can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even. Yeah, but even if, you, if you want to use it for like officiating, like if you want yeah. to be a skating official, you really have to look into like exact wording because it can really change if the person gets penalty or not. So. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, like, guys, uh, yeah. Now the changes are not that significant. They may may mean a lot in terms of strategies and for the sport, but you don't have. If you go and read it, they're highlighted what's changed in the rules. And before, I'm sure Sam remembers uh, the change mm -hmm. in when was it end of 2012. Yeah, uh, it was like such a huge change in the rules, and everything changed about the sport, the way you play. Uh, the the timing of the penalties, the two whistle starts, and it it's mm -hmm. insane. It's like you're playing a, a whole new sport. So uh, so yeah, that's what I'm 
talking about when what, what I refer to when I talk about a uh, thankless task of, of translating back then. Now I'm sure it's not. Uh, yeah. Now, now, that. as you say, now it's mostly changes around the edges rather than really core yeah. changes. Uh, mm -hmm. Thankfully, because yeah, I would, I do. I mean, I got involved in Roller Derby in 2010, so I saw a bunch. I was just in time to see all of the exciting, rapid, sudden changes in the rules. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I think how many people in this in this call remember um, remember remember minor penalties? Uh, I think BCRD started when there was still minors, and when I joined Roller Derby, it was right before the change from one minute penalties to thirty seconds penalties. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I remember back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard about him from other people, and I'm so happy that it's not in it. <laughs> yeah, as a, as an on skates official, you should be very glad that you never had to count up in your head minor penalties for everyone you were officiating as well as everybody else you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I should get on because time is getting on. So we should move to the other phase of this. So. Um, because we have, we talked a little bit about Czech World Derby, but also Team Team Czech, of course, also exists as a thing. Uh, and I did look at the roster, and I, um, I think the 2018 team was mostly Prague City. There was a few hard mm -hmm. goals, and then there was a couple of skaters from other places who... Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, but it, it was mostly, like, Czech-based, Czech-made, like... I know that when we were watching, like, of course, because we were, like, uh, really excited about doing the national team, it was, like, a big dream for many people. Like, you cannot imagine how, like, I was, like, so, like, overwhelmed by the fact that we are doing a national team. And I was, like, basically crying from the beginning to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the skaters, and it was a just a dream come true for me. And, yeah, like... When we were going through the rosters of the other uh, like national teams, we saw people from like you know the top top tier mm -hmm. teams, like people from Gotham playing for like Portugal, and we yeah. were like, <laughs> yeah, and we are here, and we are all like from PCRD and goals, <laughs> and some people who managed to you know travel here from Britain or Austria, and that's it, and we don't have any like big names or big base we are just you know doing it by heart all on our own without sponsors or anything so it felt like kind of mm. awkward in a way <laughs> but on the other hand it was like it was us and you know you could at least share it with the people who are there with you every day doing the role derby in your own country and yeah so like for me, Czech roller derby team was a big dream come true, and I was really happy that at least for the first year we managed to have a team that was consisting of people who actually live in the Czech Republic and have to live the everyday reality of dealing with, you know, Czech roller derby because like, <laughs> it's a hard job sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, like I was just really, really happy about it. And, yeah. and from from the other point of view, because uh, me and Petya, we were in uh, in Manchester uh, only to to observe and to what? cheer, to cheer. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> to cheer. Because uh, our uh, biggest crowd, our these <laughs> yes. two people, okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah, like, but we people. we were able to yell over like these are huge crowd from German teams and stuff. So <laughs> I'm I'm very proud of it. Yeah. My, my cheering voice is very strong, so so I have another opportunity to try it. And and even though though I only had the opportunity to, to just watch, uh, it was it was also very emotional to like see the Czech national world derby team, and it, yeah, was, it was really absolutely. awesome. It was really awesome. So how 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 hard was it to actually organize? Well, before we I will switch to the video now, so you did, we're under sharing the video screen. But while I'm doing that, how hard was it to organize? Um, in Czech. I mean, obviously, with most of your skaters from from the two Prague-based teams. I mean, how how did it feel as a as a as a to run a national team for the first time for people who were on it or involved with it? Yeah. So maybe I can 
go because uh, from when uh, some people here uh, wanted to start a Czech national team, because I was, um, I was, and I still am a part of uh, my country national team, Portugal. Um, and I, I had been as a skater in the World Cup in 2014. So people asked me if I could help, you know, give some tips on how to maybe organize tryouts and how to do it in the fairest way possible. So pretty much we had a meeting with representatives of the teams uh, at the time. Uh, so at the time it was, more, it was PC, someone from PCRD, someone from Heartbreaking Dolls. And pretty much we had a brainstorming and uh, we put up uh, first uh, applications for someone to manage the team, to take care of logistics and things like that, and for coaches as well. Uh, in the beginning, um, uh, I applied as a coach for just for the beginning uh, because it was a bit of, I would think it would be a bit of conflict of interest should my country and Czech Republic go play in the World Cup. So for, about, for the beginning, I was a part of uh, coaching. So we organized tryouts, uh, you know, to be as fair as possible. And yeah, from then on, uh, we had a quite consistent um, training schedule and the goal was uh, to just have a team to take to the World Cup to represent the, the country. So, uh, and then at some point I had to, to pull back a, a bit because, uh, you know, with the preparations for the World Cup and I would be representing my own country, uh, I didn't think it was very um, feasible to you know, be involved into, to, into teams, uh, yeah, at the time. So maybe then Lutza can, because <laughs> <laughs> she was kidding. Yeah, so uh, I think the organization itself wasn't that complicated. As Joanna said, it was the tryouts, the organization of the uh, management, doing the applications for coaches, etc. So, like, this part was very kind of easy. Then we had practices. We practiced once a month, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So, and because of course we had some uh, skaters who were not from Czech, Czech Republic. I mean, not, there weren't that many, but few of them were. So we tried them to come at least to two practices so they could meet the team and, you know, get familiar and have at least some common strategies and stuff. So that was it. Uh, I remember that like in half uh, half year of the practices, we had issue with venue, which we uh, sometimes have, sometimes we don't, depends how Surprise. the owners, <laughs> how the owners. Oh, that's out. true. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. So we lost a venue at some point. So we had to, you know, improvise a bit on the training schedule, but I think we still managed to have all of the practices that were planned. So that was yeah. a thing that uh, was quite okay. And then we were trying to get some, uh, you know, because we were like beginning from the scratch. So we also had to have some logo, some uh, jerseys to design, etc. So we had a graphic designer who was also part of the Czech team. Her name is Ladis, and she's also behind the Czech roller derby, derby team logo and also behind the, tea, uh, the logo of Praxi the roller derby. She has mm -hmm. like this very... Uh, beautiful style which looks like it's been carved into wood. This one? And, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like very like strong colors and very like vivid images. So yeah, so she was the designer. She also designed our jerseys. And then we were attempting to actually get some money for the journey because we had no sponsors and we weren't really uh, like, I mean, we were probably able to finance it ourselves, but we hope that if we could, you know, make it a bit easier for people mm -hmm. who are, for example, students, so they cannot really like spend that much money on, you know, roller derby, even though it's a World Cup. So we were trying to do some fundraising 
sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't i think we took lots of like very valuable lessons from it so yeah i think like those like inner things like managing the sponsors or the fundraisers was, was like more demanding and challenging than actually the team itself because then it was i think quite straightforward <laughs> Good. Okay. So, uh, can you see the <laughs> can you see the thing I'm streaming? Uh, yes. I'm sharing with you. Can you. It's a black box, right? Currently. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So this is going to be video. So you might get audio, but I want to talk about this. So this is the first game that Team Czech played at the world at the World World Cup against Philippines. Uh, spoilers: You didn't win this one. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah. You did. I <laughs> yeah. So um, hopefully you can see it playing. Um, let me know if it's a are you okay? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, how did so? I mean, this was your your first game at the World Cup itself. So, how did you feel um, coming into this? As a, I mean, because obviously Team Philippines were also pretty much an unknown as well at this uh, point. Uh, I think we like okay. So in the beginning, we were like thinking about our strategies because yes, we were a very new team uh, in the World Cup. It was our first ever like national representing experience so we were having this discussion about whether we want to be like really strong or we want to just have fun because this is our like you know first experience ever and mostly we decided uh, and agreed that because it's our first uh, time that we want to really enjoy it and don't want to like stress too much because I think, as I said, like we were we were having representatives from like mostly the Prague teams, so we like had some gaming experience. But also, when you look at the rankings, we were not always like the top of the tops. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. living living here is hard, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, yeah, like for our. For us, or at least for me, it was about like really enjoying the moment of being able to represent uh, our country, which I think we fulfilled quite well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and by the way, in this gem, you can see uh, Lenka, who is number <laughs> yeah, 13. Yeah. And fun fact, she is now uh, skating for Kalio Rolling Rainbow. She ah. is thing in their 18 right now and this is from the time when she was still in Czech Republic in Prague so and she's actually the captain of 18 isn't she yeah, yeah, yeah at the yeah, moment I think so. yeah this is this so, is obviously yeah a good export from um, from from Czech <laughs> Republic <laughs> so I think yeah I think uh Philippines obviously, I think, wanted to make wanted to prove something at the start of this game because I think that's the best jam they had in the entire game. It was the first oh, jam. It, <laughs> it's possible, but actually, like at the time, I uh, didn't consider myself like the strongest player on the roster, mm. but I actually expected to be much harder. Like I mm. was, you know, because it was like a you know a national game, so you would expect mm. to be like really tough, really hard. And I was surprised that, I mean, yes, they were like, you know, eating us, but uh, not in the like <laughs> physical way. I expected it to be much harder. So that was one of the like biggest surprises for me that, you know, like it could have been much, much worse, I think. Mm -hmm. Was there anything? Was there anything <laughs> but, I mean, you know, to, to be fair, I mean, till Team Philippines actually did pretty well in the tournament uh, compared to yeah. some oh, oh. patients. So um, it was not. It was not at all embarrassing to um, to hold them to the score you held them to, um, and yeah. again, it was it was both of yours first games in the in the tournament, and indeed, both of your first ever World Cups. So it's hard to it's hard to adjust to things. Um, yeah. When we talked to Italy uh, last time, and we watched their first game. I mean, they they played. Um, I don't know who they played now. Did they play indigenous? They might have played indigenous, and they were they were they had no idea what to do either. And you can see over the course of the game. Everyone is adjusting to the fact they're playing in this mm -hmm. national teams game, and I think you can see that here as well. I think um, 
Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those memories. <laughs> <laughs> But also, I mean, you know, it's not, you know, I think, I mean, so I guess, are we going to play, play this or are we going to, I don't know, but yes, um, <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is everyone is very, everyone is distracted by watching the, by watching the game because it was actually exciting. Um, we, we are lost There's in lots it. Of happening yeah. <laughs> and I actually haven't seen it because I was warming up, I think, for yeah. my oh. first game probably. Yeah, and now I'm cheering twice, once in the in the team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Micah, but it's, are you actually um, here in the audience? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually uh, with Petra. Where are you? Uh, yeah, in the corner. I am, I'm waiting for Lutza to be honest. Uh, are you there? In the... I was playing. You're, this she's game. here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. there. Yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so one more job with Lutza. <laughs> but yeah, I think one of the, the um, things with, the, with these short games is that, uh, yeah, for you still usually, because you are playing the first oh. games of the tournament are, are the short games, mm -hmm. you're usually kind of like, for some people, it's the first time you're actually skating as a team. Mm -hmm. And it was even the case for, for, my, um, for my national team because uh, we have had a few trainings. Uh, we didn't have any training with everyone from the team. And we had uh, the, the first time that we were all together was in the World Cup. We had this uh, training before and we had the chance to, to have a scrimmage against Team Romania, actually, mm -hmm. uh, during one of the trainings, which was great. But you're still kind of get used, getting used to to everyone mm -hmm. and to to kind of have these the, the lineups and the communication with the bench coach and everything. And uh, I what I felt with these short games is that you when you when I was finally warmed up enough, you know, like especially yeah, mentally, yeah. it's finished. So <laughs> you're like, yeah, I kind of wish you had a second half. Because mm -hmm. you know that you would do so, a much better job as a team. So, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's either that or uh, having much less teams in a yeah. tournament. So, yeah. Also, it was like really great because we had our first games to be against first Philippines and then it was Japan. Mm -hmm. And like both these uh, countries, like we never have the experience to play against any of the players because they are either too yeah. far away, out of reach, or they play in teams that are not like too high for us. So it was really great to be able to, you know, stand on the track from people who we wouldn't probably meet in other circumstances so uh, I mean at least for me personally it was like really great to see how is derby played in the Philippines mm -hmm. or Japan because like these are like very distant countries for us mm -hmm. while when we were playing against Germany it was our third yeah, game yeah. yeah yeah unfortunately yeah <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, we, we did try um, to match up teams against teams that they were unlikely to have a chance to play against normally um, as part of the design. So, um, was there anything yeah. that surprised you about about things being different or the same when you played Philippines and Japan? Uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> I think, like, because every team is so different, like, they always have some special features that... Uh, mm. Like you can maybe see it in the like, um, I hope it will not sound too bad or anything, but like different like body, uh, like body types. Yeah, frames. You know? like, yeah. yeah, like, so, like some, some teams you can, especially, I noticed it with Italian teams. So if any one of them is listening, please don't hate me. <laughs> I just think that many of, it, like when we are playing Italian teams, many of the girls are, are like the players are like rather small, but mm. very like, you know, like they are like little bonds. They are just, you know, springing to the, mm -hmm. to the future, you know, with their <laughs> bodies. And like in Philippines, you can see that they are also like smaller, but like they are mm. very like bulky. And I don't know if it's like a thing or if I'm just imagining it because like sometimes I see 
teams where everybody has like very similar body types. I think, and... I think there is. Yeah, I think I think it's a thing you get. I mean, the the running joke. I mean, you've played Finns a lot, right? And the fin Finnish teams are very distinctive in um, in their makeup, and even more so. I mean, the the Swedish teams and the Dutch and the uh, the Danish teams tend to be gigantic, right? Because mm -hmm. It's a Scandinavian <laughs> thing. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. I think there are, obviously, trends. Yeah, so, like, yeah. So, yeah, that's a thing that I always, like, you know, look at the first because, you know, I don't know the teams. I don't know the players. So, that's the first thing I see. And I'm also, like, always really surprised, like, how they are working with their body type or their... Mm -hmm. You know, buddies in general, like, I'm always amazed by those, like, tiny little jammers who will just, you know, get through a wall with, like, two meter tall people. And I'm like, how do you do that? So, yeah, like, yeah. Um, small is <laughs> tiny, is tiny, but, but she's yeah. just, just a bullet that, that will get through everything. Yes. <laughs> so. And, uh, yeah, so. And um, I mean, how did you, I guess this is a more general topic for anyone on the team, but I mean, obviously, I don't think Prague had been to the UK before, uh, before uh, the World Cup. Yeah, had for, no, I don't no, think no, so. No, mm -hmm. no, we have never played in UK. Actually, we were like really happy that the World Cup was in the UK because traveling there isn't that hard for us it's like mm -hmm. quite reachable so you know like we can get plane tickets quite cheap i understand that you know especially for the people from philippines or mm -hmm. you from the us like it was a much bigger investment so like it was really good and uh i have actually also been to manchester before so i was ready for the weather and the conditions <laughs> <laughs> so yes. it didn't really surprise me <laughs> So, at least, yeah. at least it made you happy to be indoors for um, for four days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but also I was like always like so starstruck every time I went to the toilet because I could see like players from like Gotham or like <laughs> you know and they are just casually washing their hands next to you and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you did you manage to pluck up the courage to say hi to any of them? I know that Bonnie Sanders came to our soul and she really liked our logo or they liked really like our, our logo and I was mm -hmm. like really proud of it because like you know a person like Bonnie Sanders notices you like that's amazing <laughs> 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 but yeah I was like just yeah uh, so it was just a very emotional tournament for me personally because also um, uh, my boyfriend he was also like the president of the national team because he was the only one who could provide his address to have like official um, uh, house for the, for the team. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, to make a derby team legal, you have to like you know. Like have some like a governing body, mm -hmm. and we call it in Czech it's Zapsaný spolek. I don't really know how to translate this to English. It's, it's like a company. You need to like yeah, have so, official, yeah, so, yeah, so, official so, yeah, company. sort of yeah. yeah. So you have like official company which has to have some residence somewhere, and because all of the players are living in a rented apartment or <laughs> or something, they cannot really you know use the address. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah. he was the one who provided his address to be the company's resident so yeah it was kind of uh, like he was very... also one of the coaches so yeah he was also that, one of the actually. coaches and yeah so like we had like lots of you know like ups and downs in our relationship because of this because I was just so emotional and he was also so emotional and it was like <laughs> a big thing <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think so a lot I, of, I, yeah. yeah so I'm just like really proud that we all survived it and <laughs> we managed to, you know, get back to Derby after this. Although, actually, I think what is not visible and what was like really important was what happened after the World Cup because the World Cup, like before the World Cup, every event or every, like, I think, 
activity that was happening in Czech Road Derby, it was like heading towards the World Cup. Like everybody was really focused on that. And then after we came home and the World Cup was over, it was like, so now what? Like, what do we do? Like people were like retiring or (laughs) saying that they need to take a break. And like the attendance for practices, at least in our team, I don't know if in uh, Heartbreaking Dolls it was the same, but like the attendance dropped and everybody was like, drained out <laughs> like there was absolutely no energy for anything so i think actually we have the, the opposite actually we were so yes <laughs> yeah and it thoroughly motivated us uh in practices and it was sort of seen that uh like because there was just only two girls i think if I remember yeah. Correctly. yeah so and they were so excited about it so and they speak a lot about it and we have to uh practice these and these so and it helps us it also helps the scrimmages with you because <laughs> <laughs> but uh like uh it was a huge motivation for us i think it does yeah. depend oh. how many skaters you have that are yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so for for Praxis and Old Derby, since like bigger part of the roster was our teammates, it was really challenging to get back on mm-hmm. track after this. And yeah, like there were so many people who were about to leave or they left or yeah, it was just a very big mess and it, it took us a while to get out of it. But as uh, Clara mentioned about the uh, uh, scrimmages, that was like one of the greatest things I think that came out of the World Cup. Yeah, that's true. Because like before that, the two prac teams didn't really cooperate that much because um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just some inner bullshit. It doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, so after the World Cup, we like kind of finally got to hang out more and yeah. We started to oh, yeah, organize. The, the relationship got much, much better after the yeah. World Cup because yeah, because we fo- teams started speaking to each other and hanging out in pubs, which never happened before. Yes, so suddenly and on a track, were... like of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Valas is talking a lot about beers and pubs, <laughs> and yeah, that's where we <laughs> socialize in here. <laughs> That's mostly when most of official events are created, like yeah. let's do this and there, let's just, you know, talk it over beer and then we have <laughs> the whole events of Czech Roller Derby. So yeah, of course. I don't think it's yeah. that unusual. I think there's a lot of a lot of leagues organize things around this kind of our thing. Our team started over beer, so yeah. yeah. Our our team was just beer for the whole <laughs> yeah, for like for for a year and a half. I was just organizing uh, roll derby beers <laughs> until uh, we we got our the final beer. Yeah, I, <laughs> until the, with uh, until Mikita came to our team and she was like, "Bitches, I'm buying skates, so no let's, more beer. <laughs> no more beer. Let's let's uh, do roll derby." Yeah. Yeah, so I think maybe that's a hint to Boyana. Like, if you want to start your own derby team and also Eva. Yeah. All the recurring alcoholism. is very important from the Czech roller derby. Yeah. <laughs> For Czech life. <laughs> Yeah, sort of. Like yeah. it's it's a way yeah. of living in here. If, if you do teamwork, you might as well be drinking beer at the same time because otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And, you know, and also, it, <laughs> um, no, but also no, I was going to say bond, bonding is important, right? So, you know, you can't, uh, some teams, I think, go through a period of becoming very athletic and deciding they're not going to do the drinking thing because they're, because they're going to be seriously training. But I think you have to have some way of bringing the team together as a community, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the thing we have in our team, that basically, we, uh, we are trying to... Uh, go to uh, to pop after at least one training a week, uh, mm-hmm. and it doesn't necessarily like. Not normally, uh, most of the people are not even drinking beers. Uh, there's like one person having beer and uh, like five lemonades, five <laughs> lemonades, uh, tea, uh, vegan pizza, and uh, and uh, and uh, some cheese and stuff. So so we usually have. Since we are training quite late, uh, we have really uh, crazy uh, type of orders in the pub, but they are already used to that, like uh, yeah. pizza yeah, at I, I 11. Think, I think at this point, it's very important to say that 
uh, to have a beer in Czech language doesn't necessarily mean to have a beer. Yeah. You just <laughs> have a beer yeah. to socialize. You don't yeah. need to drink a beer. You just have a beer. Or without I, mean, I think yeah. I think I think that's true in English. I think mm-hmm. people can say they go down the pub certainly and they don't necessarily have to drink beer. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. I also suspect isn't that Czech drinking culture is a bit like Buddhist drinking culture in that there's the people who think that people who aren't drinking beer are perhaps not joining in properly and you just have to deal with that and then encourage people to be more sensible. Uh, yeah, it's like like it's really hard to meet somewhere else than the pub hmm. actually because like and even if you do like if you meet in a cafe they still have the beers in there so <laughs> 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 yeah but um yeah the, like the socializing in pubs is just the thing of culture in here i think like yeah it's a perfect place. There's food, there's music, like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? What, what else? Yeah. For me, I think the bonding and the community is a like, huge part of the, of the therapy. Yes. It's, it's not only like the sport itself, but all the people or the relationships we have. Yeah, like from our experience, who can survive our uh, pop time. Uh, <laughs> they, will stick with the, they, they will stick with the team. Yeah. The, who can survive the freak show in a, in a pop? They can survive our, uh, our team and they're right for us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, getting back to the national team a little bit. So um, have you thought yeah. about the next, the next team check? Yes. No. Like we are, and there are also, or there were some um, attempts to bring the team back together for some like other uh, smaller events. Uh, it was some events regarding the Olympic Games because we have some like possibilities to exhibit the sport, but uh, in the end, it didn't work out. And also now, since Olympics are being postponed, who knows what mm-hmm. happens. But um, I think the national team is such a big uh, commitment. Uh, and since like all the active people in World B who would also be skaters in uh, the national team are already really active in their you know, home teams or home mm-hmm. leagues. So uh, unless I think there is uh, a date and you know, a space for the next uh, World Cup, so we would know if we can actually afford to go there because I know that if it was, for example, in Japan, half of the league, half of the possible teammates wouldn't have the resources to go there. So uh, it would make fundraising even more uh, important. And yeah, so we are waiting for the information. What happens if there is any announcement about the World Cup, or if there are like some, uh, I don't know, some qualifications for the World Cup, which, because from what I understand, there are so many national teams that who knows if yeah. a team like Czech Republic would actually be, you know, able to get to the actual World Cup. So we will see. But yeah, we are just waiting for the information. But apart from that, we really don't want to plan or organize anything bigger because it's a big commitment, mm-hmm. at least for oh, Yeah, I, and I think that's a problem for a lot of national teams, actually, is that the, as you say, the people who are going to be involved in the national team are also the people who are often most involved in doing stuff in their own league. And yes. they're usually on the A-team of that league. And they, if they, the league has more than one team and, you know, they tend to burn out. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I will say, um, so has your, uh, you must have a rep on the Royal Derby Nations Committee. Uh, yeah, we have somebody representing, but I actually don't know who that is right now. So, yeah, so uh, <laughs> they should have told you that the, that the vote, uh, uh, oh, yeah. vote over, over priorities and yeah. The, all the teams be like, able to be in the build when the World Cup was the number is the number one voted priority. So, if oh, there wow. is one, even when there is one, uh, it will be open to everyone. There will not be. That's a player. great. Um, but um, at least, if it is physically possible. Um, but uh, yes. Uh, but have you so? Yeah. 
some other teams. So, for example, I'm thinking about uh, Team Japan and Philippines and Indigenous and Korea um, have sort of hung around in a kind of semi-existing state to do other stuff. So they they play a game, they play a tournament at Rollercon uh, every year. Presumably not this year, because although they haven't cancelled Rollercon yet, um, I'm not mm. optimistic. Um, yeah. But they they play a tournament every every year. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. Has there been a th- any feeling about the possibility of a sort of perhaps less intensively organized but semi-official team check to play other things? I think even though semi-organization is still organization, <laughs> that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> At least as how I see it. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Any commitment apart from what we are doing in our leaks is too big at this point so i don't know really um i guess that first we we need to have that goal in front of us like mm-hmm. if we yes. uh if we have that place where where the world cup is gonna uh gonna be happening then we can assess uh uh, what uh, what is the amount of stuff we actually need to do? How many uh, sponsors we we need to get to to be able to to go to that place? So after that, we we can try to assess whether it's possible for us and do do stuff. And it's also much easier to get people together if if they know okay the World Cup is going to be in uh, this city in this country in that date. And uh, then people can focus, then uh, they can get hyped to, to actually uh, join up. I think it's easier when you have sponsor. Actually, it's like uh, <laughs> the money is a really huge motivation because if uh, you know you can afford it, like it will not cost you fortune, that uh, the motivation is really huge. So when you don't have to pay for practices, you don't have to pay for a, a ticket or something like that. So, uh, it's really also uh, easy to manage the people because you don't have to care about this kind of thing. So. Mm. And, and yeah. you don't have to be like choosing just from the people who can afford it, but yeah. from yeah. everyone who is interested, which mm. I think is the goal of everyone so that nobody feels like they Yeah, it's a bit more somewhere. fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So if not national teams, how about the other popular thing that nations seem to be doing nowadays, um, national tournaments? Um, is there, now, the, now, I mean, when it was just Prague and hard-breaking dolls, it doesn't really seem that it makes much sense to have a national tournament, but you have three teams now. Like a championship. Seem to be four, so. yeah, a nationals. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Have you, has there been any thought about a possibility of a nationals? Well, there has been in my head. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mine as well. <laughs> Yeah, um, I nothing think official is being discussed. Nothing official, yeah. but yeah, there are some like thoughts uh, coming out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the like biggest uh, challenge right now will be how soon our borders will open. Yeah, mm-hmm. because if it will take a while, which we don't know. But if it will, then the only way for us to actually play derby is to play each other. So I think that's mm-hmm. just one step away from, yeah, you know, yeah. organizing orga- organizing an actual, like, you know, Czech derby champs mm-hmm. or something. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we started when... We ever wanted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think uh, like the cooperation, we started uh, that we have double header. We were thinking in autumn uh, about triple header. And I think it's, uh, I think we uh, should start working on these kind of projects, uh, like uh, uh, organizing bouts uh, with two or three teams together because it's uh, more interesting for the audience. It's cheaper and uh, and it's, it's better for officials organization yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, for example, uh, both of Prague teams, uh, I think we can work together uh, and it's easy for us because uh, we can speak uh, on a daily basis together, like where, if we want. So, and for example, I was really uh, happy when we organized on uh, last year the double header and it was huge success. And uh, so I think uh, if it's not working, uh, opening the uh, borders for us, we can 
were played together, but uh, still it's open just only for Poland, for example, so we can manage to do that. Yeah, I think we are like getting experience in like organizing the bigger events because like uh, until recently we only had like single header bouts. Now we are attempting to do double headers, maybe triple headers. So I think that's also a part of it, like because um, yeah, like organizing a big event like this with some like structure. Yeah. Mm, as, Clara mentioned, as Clara mentioned before, last year we did a tournament of sevens here in Prague, which was a huge experience in terms of organization of a bigger event. So it was great experience. It was great. So we hope to replicate it. It, uh, it was supposed to be, I think, in one month. Yeah, 8th of, of May. 8th of May, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not going to happen, of course. So oh, no. let, let's do some double or triple header. Yeah, of course. We would love to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think it's possible to. I mean, again, sevens games might be shorter, but you still have a lot of them. Part of the most of the difficulty of organizing a tournament is it's the number of games. One day event. Yeah. Yeah. Is the advantage that if you have tournament, uh, we don't actually organize the tournament. Uh, it wasn't uh, WFTDA uh, no. sanctioned, so, but uh, for example, the double header was. So mm -hmm. it's these differences between these two games, uh, like you can do with so many teams, like mm -hmm. actually all of them. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we can all right. do it may in Australia, Australia right? So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It may actually be the only way to play for the time being, I guess, yeah. for yeah. some for a few months probably. So nobody knows. Yeah. And everybody's itching to go skating again. Yes. Uh, so much. Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, that was the end of the game as well. Um, it says half time because they didn't change the. Yeah. Change the um, the overlay. Um, but yes, it actually wasn't. I mean, I graphed um, the share of the score you had over the tournament over the game, and actually you uh, you gained more share as the as the game went on. So uh, mm -hmm. it's always good when you're improving over over the game. Um, yeah. But as I said, I think you can see from the. I mean, everyone um, I think had uh, the right the right spirit when they were. Um, when they were getting into it, I think um, I think it's true to say that just because it was um, a little um, dis disappointing loss doesn't mean that um, it wasn't also a really good game. And I think it was. Yeah. I think it was a good. I think I it was a good tournament for for the Czech Republic as well. Um, so I I've, I've been diverting your attention now for like almost two hours. So I guess. Um, if any, does anyone have any other things we'd like to talk about? Um, I think we've covered quite a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything you want to shout out um, for if people if people if people want to know more about Czech World Derby? What should they do? Should they go and look at? Um, does Prague have, have games on the online? Um, Not really. We don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have some promo materials. Uh, we usually do it for the, the time of recruitment uh, as mm -hmm. well. Uh, yeah, but we're quite, I think, or kind of active on social media. Mm -hmm. So uh, for sure on our Facebook page, people can see a lot of pictures from previous games. Uh, they can see a really nice roster, actually pretty new, and pretty nice roster pictures, which uh, I, we don't know when we'll use them. But yeah, they can go there and meet the team. Um, yeah, and, and just get to know a bit more about uh, what we have been doing and what we've been involved in the past eight years. So, yeah. I think uh, the problem with the social media is that both Prague teams that uh, have 
like the same fans, uh, the same mm. audience on both. So uh, what is my dream that I really want to uh, see some stranger people in the audience during <laughs> like really that it's no one's friends, no one's relatives. And that, mm. that will make me really happy. And I think it will be a really huge success for Czech Royal Derby. And Nobody be like, from, how did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's just on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing on the double header that uh, we had last year. That uh, was one family uh, who just only run uh, around the corner, uh, uh, heard some noises from the hall, and they wanted to go inside and watch the uh, sh uh, like the bout. It was the second match, and they was uh, impressed. And so this is something that's really amazing to see these mm. kind of people over there. Have, have you ever had that happen at training? We've had. I know. Uh, I was at some of the Scottish national team trainings and they train in a hall that's got a glass window along with the entirety of one wall. And every so often they just get random people gawking. And then they had at one point, it was the, the last, the last, last national team, there were some people who poked their head about and said, what are you doing? This looks really cool. <laughs> and she wanted, and want, wanted to spectate the national team training. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had that happen? Have you ever had people break into your training space and be excited? Question. Sam, <laughs> the connection. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Oh, Sam, you're muted. Sam, you're muted. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. So yes. No. So I was going to say, have you ever had um, weird things happen where you're, um, where you get people seeing you? I don't know if you train in halls that are shared, but we've had. I've certainly seen people turn up to shared training sessions and be. Um, yeah. Be, yeah. Be recently, surprised by the weird thing happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah this mostly happens in Sebastian, right? Yes, yes, that's what I was mentioning. We had, uh, there's one venue which is like too big for practicing alone. So we always share it with uh, like, you know, basketball players or other sports <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sports. <laughs> anyway, and... <laughs> And yeah, sometimes like they uh, see us and they're like, what is happening? So they stop by and look at part of our practices. And yeah, we were like, yeah, we need to, you know, have some promotional materials in there so they know yeah. who we are and they can look us up. So yeah, practice the older be on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, but for, usually, uh, apart from that, the practices are usually quite closed because we practice in school gymnasiums. Yeah. So yeah, same there place. is not much. Yeah. yeah, it's the same like we have closed, uh, closed training sessions. However, since uh, we are going outside for skating from time to time, uh, sometimes you, you meet with people and it's like, oh, this, those are really cool skates and stuff. So, so sometimes we go straight to the to the promo mode and so it's like, <laughs> yeah, next week we have training. You can definitely come. Join us. We can borrow your skates. Like, yeah. 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 Sometimes it looks like we are some kind of call just blocking oh, people sure. there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as for the promotion of our team, the best uh, so far, the best way how to promote the site from social media and Facebook and Instagram and stuff was to put flyers at the women's toilet. Yeah, that's okay. amazing. Mm. Yeah, it yeah. Works. Works. The inside but doors. it has to be right in the part where you're <laughs> sitting down. Yes. So it has to be like, yes. you know, at the eye level. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> perfect technique. And we actually have like yeah. three people now, or two people. Yeah, two, I think so. Two too. people who, who, uh, who got, got in, in the... Uh, from women's bathroom. From yeah. women's bathroom, actually. Yeah. In pops. <laughs> in pops. As the beer again. Yeah. <laughs> So if people want to find out about uh, the No Fix Show um, in this go to the toilet. Yeah. yeah, go to the toilet and also the <laughs> website. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you have a website or is it social uh, media? Yeah, um, mainly so, just social media at the moment. Uh, even though we have this uh, this uh, web page somewhere, but it's not working. There's, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's a work in progress. For sure. so. yeah, but, uh, There's the main page thing, oh, there be burnout and this also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there's the link to social media. Yeah, yeah. But, but we are pretty active on Instagram or Facebook. So, uh, and I think we also have Twitter, but I'm not sure. I think nobody. No, no. But, so, but, but we respond very fast on Facebook usually yeah. or emails. 
Yeah. So Facebook and Instagram, that's, that's the main, uh, main source of our uh, freakiness. And Ostrava? There is a Facebook page, Trojhady Ostrava Roller Derby, which mm -hmm. is updated as soon as something new happens. <laughs> <laughs> quite sporadically but it's there and since i'm the person managing it i am being usually very responsive when it comes to people that would like to get in touch <laughs> and if people want to officiate is it uh is it do you oh is is officiating basically a Prague city and heartbreaking dolls thing or does is there are you know, also officials place? in Berlin. Do, do you have that's very impressive for a new league it's it's always hard getting the officials um yeah, like, uh, for well, we have officials like the people who are skating in the league, uh, <laughs> sometimes officiating other events mm -hmm. on very amateur level yet. Yeah, yeah, so we don't really have officials that we can use for our own. We are, we are uh, we have pretty responsible NSOs, uh, but as for skating officials, uh, we, we try to keep a few uh, scrimmages to, to actually officiate. Uh, it was fun. Yeah. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> we learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, as of right now, most of the Czech games are officiated by more or less the same group of officials. Yeah. In Brno, amazing. In Brno, in amazing. So, yes. yeah. yeah, most of There is a Facebook are... page, I think, or something like that, that could like be manageable to people. Oh yeah, there uh, is private yeah f private Facebook oh, uh, private. Facebook group called uh, Czech officials, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly all of the events uh, happening in Czech Republic, we posted there how many officials we need for what, and also sometimes it's ba it's basically called private group. So anything we need to discuss events or maybe even some uh, foreign events we mm. need to go abroad, we organize it there. So. Yes, we are highly organized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so everyone is on everyone is on Facebook. So if people want to get in touch, they can find you there uh, and Instagram. Um, I I'm a big fan of the leagues promoting themselves on Instagram because people like pictures, and Roller Derby has lots of lots of good of yeah. good footage. So I think Instagram is enough. Oh yeah. But um, for now, I think I'm going to let everyone head off to their social isolation. Um, so <laughs> thank you thank you all for coming. And I think we learned a lot about Czech World Derby. So um, for now, I'll let everyone wave goodbye. And this has been the second SRDB mm. podcast. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having us. Yeah. Hey, Bye. 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 Thanks for doing this. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. 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 <laughs>